everyone, and welcome once again to the Adventures Travel Club television show. We find ourselves on the Grand Cayman Island, and oh boy, we just left the governor's mansion. He didn't invite us in, but uh, no, uh, he didn't. But, but I, anyway. my feelings were hurt. Were, were they really? Yes. Well, that's too bad. But I thought about <laughs> the Grand Cayman Islands, and you know, it made me think of the book, The Firm. Did you read that? No, I didn't. His own book. No. That's because it I was full of. Did you? Well, this yeah. is where they had all the money. Oh, really? Well, let's learn a little bit something about the real Grand Cayman. Okay. And this one here that's true with the paint, the walls of it is over 100 years old. Mm. And the house is owned by the Bothwell family. Now, the lady that used to live there, she passed on about a year and a half ago. But she was very, very nice, and she will always be remembered by our returning visitors. They used to go in and visit with her, and she would show them a lot of the original things of the island. And uh, she requested that they should turn the house into a museum. They did say that that's what they were going to do with it. I haven't seen any progresses yet, but anyway. On most cruise ships, if you happen to hear them talking about the gingerbread house, well, this is the house. Oh. They refer to it as the gingerbread house. <coughs> and you were talking about the water a, a while ago. You noticed that a lot of the homes in the residential areas has tin roof. The reason for this, we collect the water in cisterns. We get clearer water with tin roof than you do with shingles. Well, at least when the water comes down on your tin roof, you're going to hear that you've that you got a little bit that you can add to your cistern, right? Yeah, but I think the fun part of it is when you listen to it at night when you're sleeping and you hear that, oh man, it's raining, wonderful. You ever have you ever been in a in a place like that where you had a tin roof? It, no, but I have t t like tin awnings outside of my house, uh -huh. and so at night when it rains, I hear that bing, bing, bing <laughs> on it, and it's it's nice. It doesn't keep me awake. Oh, that's good. Okay, anyway. Right now, we're going to mosey on down uh, the Grand Cayman Island, and we're going to go to the turtle farm. This is the Cayman Turtle Farm, and um, this was very interesting. I had never been to a turtle farm, nor had I been up to see turtles this I mean, this big before, you know. Yeah, but I bet you had a little one when you were a kid, I had you? a big one, yeah. Oh, you did? No, my grandfather once, brought, and I'm sure this is not legal now, brought a great big turtle. Uh, I guess it would be a desert tortoise and when we were kids and we lived pretty close just about a block from the ocean and I think it now is a uh, if it lasted it probably wandered it did wander off and it probably wandered off to the uh, to the to ocean, the ocean. well they live away. forever I don't really say forever obviously <laughs> they don't live forever time. but a very very long life but, yeah and, and I, then I had those little tiny ones too yeah well, those are the ones I'm thinking about. oh I see and yeah. they would paint them although I did have one and I never knew where it came from and my kids were delighted and I liked it because you don't have to do anything <laughs> You just don't. What, you mean just they take care of themselves. The turtle? Yeah. The I mean, like one? a cat and a dog and all of that, huh. you have work to do with it. A turtle is just a turtle. You just have some things out for it, and it takes care of itself. Well, these were certainly well taken care of, I say here, because the uh, the various tanks that they have, <clears throat> and they had them by uh, by the age and, of course, and, and by the weights that we can see here, too. And there are two different types of turtle. This, this uh, turtle or tortoise shell that you see right here is really... Uh, really quite beautiful. They have the green turtles and then the other one, and I think we have it on a sign here that'll be popping up okay. in a little bit. But uh, look, look, uh, the average weight is about 52 pounds mm -hmm. on that. I mean, it's, they, they are get bigger so than that, of course. big. It's, I think how many glasses they can make? Tortoise shell glasses? <laughs> <laughs> well, really, I must, that's what they've been using yeah. the shells for, you know. Well, they, they do. They do it. They don't th that's throw right, things away. No, it's uh, and soup and the turtle meat. And like you say, they're the, uh, the jewelry and the leather and the oil is used in cosmetics. And, uh, of course, this is used here around the island and also... Uh, then I would suspect, though, that a lot of these turtles uh, are also released back into the uh, oh, back sure into the ocean are. again. Mar, you know. this makes me think. When we went to China, and I had a gal, her name was Dorothy, and she had turtle soup as we were going down the river Lai, uh -huh. Lee, and and in the turtle soup was a leg, and my golly, I mean a real look, a leg. turtle leg, you yeah. Mean. And oh. she picked it up, and she was just gnawing away on it, and she thought. Oh, Betty, this is the best thing I ever <laughs> ate, and I could hardly watch. <laughs> oh, I'll never I'm forget that experience. I'm glad I was experience. not sitting at your table. <laughs> well, I didn't stay too long. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what we can see here, the turtles are released. Uh, some of them are released. 
uh, out into the out into the wilds, which is very good to see that they are that they are conserving this. But it, weren't you impressed with this? So I, yeah. th I thought it was really good. Uh, I, I thought it was like a, almost a lesson in ecology, a mm -hmm. lesson in uh, migration, a lesson in reproduction. We got the whole thing in yeah. there, and then going from tank to tank, the different sizes. The different species. They look so graceful, mm -hmm. don't they? They yeah. just look so graceful. For, for as big as they are. Yeah, and you know, and then later on, uh, I remember one day when we were out at sea, there were a uh, there were a bunch of turtles that we could see that were out there, you know, in in the live, I guess, as you want to call it, but out there in the in the wild, as it were, and uh, that was just really great to see that they were that they were actually out there. Uh, and that you could still see them because there are so many things of course that have been endangered now so many species that uh, it you know it's really kind of sad to well it is see sad that. and you know what happens they lay their eggs on on the sand and then they the mother leaves and they hatch by themselves and as they make their way to the sea after they come out of their mm -hmm. egg the birds pick them up and yeah. eat them so yeah. there's so many that don't survive that's right so that's why they have to lay so many eggs which of course these turtles do yeah uh, but anyway they they seem to be surviving very nicely here i should say and very very well, well protected taken, yeah very well taken <laughs> care of no right. little birds there to grab them now and this was very nice too that uh, that we were able to visit this this is just one of the things that we saw uh, on the day that we visited the Grand Cayman Island and I was uh, I was very very impressed with this this was really this was really nice to see another well, aspect of cruising that's right yeah you know a lot of people may think that hey you just stay on the ship but you don't uh, especially when you go to the Panama Canal which we are going to do again in April the 3rd of 1999 and it's not too early now to get your cabin for that but Betty let's uh, let's join the rest of the people around one of these tanks over here and just see how these little creatures are shall we I think that would be fun Well, tell me, Betty, were those uh, were they slimy little creatures or not? No, no, it was surprising. I, I it kind of gave me a shock when it started flapping its flippers, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, you say, "Oh my gosh!" But no, it was fun to do that. I enjoyed that. That's nice. And of course, you can't ever do that because you have to be behind the camera. Yep. Yep. All so, work and no play. And it's something. Except when you swim with the mantis. Right. And well, hopefully we'll do that later on today. So, but these are beautiful. You can see now why uh, these shells are used for, like you said, for glasses and for for other things. You well, know. the jewelry. They did have some jewelry in the in the uh, little store adjacent to this. Of course, every place has a store to buy mm -hmm. souvenirs. You don't go anywhere without the product being sold. Well, it's like our guide said that uh, you know the number one business there in the Grand Cayman is to have uh, to have tourists, tourists, and the second one is banking. I think we most know. And now look where we have arrived. I am ashamed to tell our viewers that we went to hell. <laughs> Honestly. You know, well, you there we are. But there we are. And all that is here is a post office. And uh, you were talking about souvenirs, some souvenir stores right here. And uh, we wonder what, why in the world did it get a name like this? And we're going to see here in just a moment. Uh, I would think it looks to me more like a moonscape, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll never find out what the other looks like. Yeah, you know, some <laughs> enterprising right person That's named that, I'm sure, because would anybody ever stop at a place like this if they didn't name it hell? They were out hunting, supposedly, and and stumbled upon this. Yeah, but and I meant so touristy for tourists, oh, oh. because then you this like I just said. Oh, everybody comes. Oh, guess where I went? I yeah. went to hell. <laughs> well, I'm not a bit surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. We went to hell, Grand Cayman. So. And this is it. So if you want to know what um, 
Hail Grand Cayman looks like. That's you're you're taking a look at it right Actually, now. Actually, that doesn't do it justice. Uh, the camera. This is the first time that you know that you've taken something like this that you can't yeah. actually get the whole idea of the pointed rocks and stuff. Right. Uh, you really have to get a little bit closer to it. Anyway, as we said, there are lots and lots of T-shirts that you can see, and of course that is uh, probably the biggest seller that uh, that we see there. Marv, did you buy a T-shirt? No. You do buy T-shirts, I know. I know, I do. I, d I don't know. For some I reason... I would never wear that, you I, know. Yeah, I didn't, oh, and I wouldn't give them to anybody. I don't... I don't you want to advertise you went to hell? Now, <laughs> if I had an angel or something, No, be I don't think so, right? Yeah. No, that were, it wasn't my cup of T-shirt <laughs> at all. Well, we're going to continue on down as uh, we go past the, the cemetery, which I think we've been past once before. Small island, as you know. Yeah, uh, the people do die. <laughs> yeah, Small that, island, large right. island, whatever. So now we're going to get ready to go on the uh, Sun Dancer. And you can see we're loading up over here. And we're going to go swim with the manta rays. And as I told you last week, this was really a thrill for me. I thought it was a uh, really great adventure. So we're leaving part of the, uh, the main island there. And we're going to go out. And I thought... You know, they gave us all the, they gave us uh, snorkeling equipment and all of this stuff. And I thought, boy, I wonder if we're going to, you know, if we'll be off a coral reef or something like that. Because I know that there was one of the trips that they had that you could go off a coral reef and go down, you know, quite a ways and uh, uh, into the, you know, you, you have to swim way down into the water and stuff. But this was a surprise because we went way out and there was like a sandbar out there. And the water was only waist deep. So I think, as I said last week, that, you know, just there's our crew, by the way. By the way, that made me think you talked about a sand bar. Well, it looks we like had a little bar on the bar yeah, with right. You, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, anybody could have done this. I mean, this was uh, uh, in the little brochure. It said, "Well, you know, it takes a little expertise." Uh, uh. Anybody could have done this. This was just really yeah, if wonderful. If you did it, uh, if I did it, anybody <laughs> could do it. Right. Well, you just stepped right off the boat. There's a little ladder and there. You don't and have to even swim. No, you don't. Uh, you just well, as you'll see here in just a moment, you, you know, just bend over in the water and. And, uh, in fact, I, I took off all the snorkeling stuff. I thought it was a little um, extra goodies there. But you, look how blue that water it's is, Betty. Isn't beautiful. that beautiful? Yeah, you see why people want to go to the Grand Caymans. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is just, you, you know, you look at this and say, like, oh, especially if, you're, if it's winter time here. And you look at this and the nice sunshine and everything. Yeah, but you uh, really have mm. to want to be in the water a lot. But you know, that was so nice about here because it's very warm outside, but the water temperature was nice and warm as well. And that's what I really like. Now, there here we, we are. are. <laughs> now, yeah, right. Now, here you're going to see some of these uh, uh, like manta rays, or some people call them sting rays. And the thing is, these were very, very friendly. Marv, you oughtn't to say that. You should have made yourself being so brave no, that you actually went no, no. in the water with no, stingrays. Are, and you know what? No, these are. You know, and <laughs> I, I think this is a way with most species like this. You know, I mean, you're, you're not there to harm. In fact, they're domestic. You're there to feed them, anyway. and we had we had fee, you know food that we could give them. You hold your hand out open and put the food in it, and then put it there in the water, and they will come along, and they'll just snatch the food right out of your hand. You want to make sure that it's open, though, because they've got kind of a suction action there with their, with their mouth. Oh, fun. Now, the only dangerous thing about this, of course, is if by mistake you might step on one, and they do have a stinger that comes out by the, you know, by their, out of their spine, uh, by that tail, as you can see right, right here, you don't see this thing. Well, then you'd, you'd have Does a lot of, hurt? you'd have a lot of pain. Yeah, you really would. So we were advised to just, when we get in the water, because you know, they could be buried in the sand, but these weren't naturally because they were all there, you know, to have a little handout as it were. So what you do is you just kind of kick the sand a little bit, just in, just in case you you know that there could oh, be man, one of these I'd guys I'd be buried. kicking it more than a little bit. <laughs> <I would laughs> <sure>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you, Betty. This, uh, now watch this guy over here on the left. This mm -hmm. is what I got a chance to do this too. He's actually going to pick up one of these rays uh, right out of the water, and they will let. Uh, I mean, they were so tame 
they're wild, but they were tame. I mean, they let you do this. See, now watch that. See, and you can see they kind of flap the, the side there. And so he's he has both arms under there, and then he's just gently lifting the ray oh, a little that, bit out of the water. That looks so exciting. It ah. was wonderful. It was wonderful. <laughs> it was great. And I just, uh, anybody now goes to Grand Cayman, you have a chance to do this. Do it. Do you it. will have more fun. I recommend me. the snorkeling and watching the sea life in the coral reefs. Well, you can do that, but now that's going to take <laughs> a little expertise because you've got to really be a pretty good swimmer to get down, you know, no. on that. But you don't look at here. You can get, yes, get out there and right. wade you're, in the water, right. you know. You're always right. Anyway. I, I apologize. No, no, no. You. That's what you, you, you that's the thing. So you can do right. what you want to do. Hey, let's go to Jamaica, shall we? All right. Of course, by now you must realize that this is Montego Bay yeah, isn't in it Jamaica. Yeah, is the music like that? It kind uh -huh. of uh, uh, to move with it. <laughs> and did you notice the man that was doing the drumming? What do you call the Congo That's drum? Not drumming. The uh -huh. yeah. He did that with one hand. Mm -hmm. Isn't that marvelous? Mm -hmm. It was really great. Yes. Really great. And of course, uh, it's really nice to have the musicians there. You know, right there at the. Uh, Get you in uh, the mood. Thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, right as you get off the ship. You know, look at the beautiful flowers too. But we are going to take a little. Uh, tour of Montego Bay so let's jump in the cab and here we go your first time here in Jamaica yes yeah, okay no. welcome you all to Jamaica thank you all right Ireman that's what we say in Jamaica Ireman everything Iron is good no problem no problem all right <laughs> so far so good so far so good all right <laughs> this is like these yeah. for the people the, the local people so they can have a house when the government built these houses, it wasn't like this that you're looking at. It was something like this little one here. Uh, I'm going to show you. Well, we had a really great driver uh, this day, and he was, he was going to take us just to the places where we wanted to go uh, on the island. And uh, one of the places that we were really interested in visiting is a real, true, honest-to-goodness bush doctor. And we're going to do that on this adventure. And this was really very exciting because even one of uh, one of our uh, one of our people got treated uh, by the bush doctor That's when right, we went up there remember that huh? yeah That's right he had some he had some I enjoyed uh, him yeah. well let's uh, head on up to that area of the bush doctor you'll find out a lot of people depend on tourists like the yeah. craft market yeah. the craft market the taxi the hotel you know yeah. the restaurant Michael, is there usually more than one ship in port, isn't there? I was surprised that there was just one ship. Well, generally, just one ship we have coming in so far, you know? Yeah, but that's, I've never before been in a port where there was only one. That's great. Well, it's great. Not one, for the shopkeepers, you know? but... 
And you see, most of these people, when they come, you know, they take the tour and they go to Ochoa. So Ochoa have a lot of shipping coming there, you know? Yeah. And so you find out a lot more people in Ochoa than even Montego Bay. Just say no problem, man. I agree. No so when you get back to your country and you you get back to your country and they would say, how oh, was it in Jamaica? You say, oh, it's Irie. That means everything is cool, no problem. <laughs> well, he kept telling us that over and over again. Irie, man, no problem. No, no. Pro You know, I, I have to say, we are going to go, we're heading on up to the bush dock. And it was quite a ways uh, to go up there. As he stated, a lot of people go out of uh, Montego Bay over to Ocho Rios and to that area. But we, this is something that we wanted to see especially. And on our way, uh, we're passing some sugar cane fields over here on our left and on our right hand side and there was a great big plantation uh, up there in a, a, a beautiful house but I just wanted to um, tell you before we got our, our listeners rather before we get up to the uh, to the bush doctor uh, you have to kind of listen very carefully to what he says because the Jamaican English is for most of us that are not used to that is a little difficult to understand so you have to kind of sharpen your I, your ears carefully. a little bit, you know, yes. yeah, uh -huh. yeah, because this man was very, very knowledgeable about all of the herbs and uh, the various natural medicines that uh, you can use, and, and which a lot of the native people here do use uh, in Jamaica. And uh, you know, I've always thought it's it's interesting because we're getting back to a lot of the. Uh, a, a lot of natural medicines, I think, even in this country, you know, the the, the old uh, things that uh, grandma and great grandma used to use, you know, and uh, we're finding that those things worked for centuries and centuries and centuries. And they and, still work. And they still work, right. Yes. So we're going to get out of our little van here, those of us that went up there, and we're in a kind of a, a very humble little place here. Is humble. Where the, <laughs> where he uh, where he lives, oh and so gosh, yes. we're going to uh, go in. But as I say again, you have to kind of uh, listen very very carefully because uh, of the dialect that uh, the Jamaicans use, and his is uh, rather thick. So if you're ready, let's listen to the bush doctor. Value for these herbs. Now the first subject will be the ginger, and this is what the ginger root looking like. This ginger root is for cooking, baking, and spices. Plus it carry a medical value. It carry a medical value. And this medical value, if you traveling by the bus, plane, ship, or any form of transportation, sometimes a stuffy nose, mommy ears, headache, fever, flu, medicines from the ginger. In bottles like this, you don't gotta drink this, you put a little in your hands, you rub the hands together, you take a breath of it. Now you can notice the ginger. And it's built by rum. Anybody yes, ma'am, and all spice pimenta. So there is nothing to poison you. There is nothing to harm you. First, the pimenta not poison. The rum not poison. No the rum. So you couldn't get poison. Okay. So you put a little in your hands like this, and you rub the hands together. You take a breath on it. Sinus, stuffy nose, headache, fever, flu. Got to go. Smell. Let me smell your hands. Hold your hands, man. Hold your hands. Hold your hands, man. Hold your hands. Rub your hands together. Come on, try it. Rub Anybody want to try it? Want to try it? Come on, everybody, try go and get them on. Come on. Thank you. Come on. Come on, ma'am. Take some. Come on, ma'am. Take some. Rub your hands together. What about you over there, ma'am? Come on, ma'am. Rub your hands together. Take a breath in it. You can take a bath in that. It does. It does. Well, the rum. You know it would. Well, as the rum off. As the rum's gone, you just send the ginger. Yeah. You will be smelling ginger left after the rum disappear. Oh. So that clears the natural and move that sinus off. It does seem like it clears the throat, huh? It may be imagination. No problem. I'm on a high. <laughs> you get high. That's high. That's high. Sometimes it's nice to be high, ma'am. No, these are the all spice <laughs> preventer. Oh, these prevent you know, all the one that goes to Far East country mm -hmm. and large export for the purpose of making perfume, medicines after sheer lotions and Novocaine. Dentist extracting a tooth, it got to freeze the gum before it's removed the tooth. The Novocaine he used from the pimento. And nobody cultivate this. This is something that will while. But if you have a toothache, you crush the grains of the pimento and the gum and it diminishes the toothache. So that's the all spice pimento. Pimento, just yes. like when you yes. grind it, it's red? Yeah, no, ma'am, not the red one. Oh, These are the tall spice ones. 
spice pimento. Pimento, all spice not, pimento, so not the red, the, not the red pimento. The okay. red ones are pepper. Okay. Not that one. These are the pimento. Did you all folks, did you, my subjects, interested to you people? In what? My subjects are interested to you oh, people. Yes, very nice. Okay. Now, uh, you know you have a lot of coffee drinker. Anybody drink coffee down here? Sure. Yeah, Best coffee in the world, man. This is, this is what it comes. Don't know that's the same coffee. Oh, is it? Yes. It's called the Blue Mountain Coffee. These coffee grow on the largest mountain in the Caribbean. It's called Blue Mountain. That mountain, 7,402 feet. Grow your lots of coffee, cocoa, tobacco. So to get the coffee in the refined form, the ripe coffee pick, put in the sun, dry the bean, roast them, ground them, it make your coffee. And this coffee is one of the strongest coffee you have in history. It's called the Blue Mountain Coffee. Yes, ma'am, what's the reason why it's white? It's because it's not roasted and roasted. So when it roasted the dog, so this is what the coffee beans look like. Do they sell that in stores? That yes, ma'am, in the food, the food store, the Harvard Culture and Store Downtown Market. And they call it blue? Mountain coffee. Mountain coffee, yes. just mountain. Mountain coffee. coffee. And it's so stronger that's than... That's the strongest coffee all over the world. You see all that coffee you get from Japan? Yeah. That's no, a blue one. No, we don't get... Oh, from Japan? Yes, ma'am. Who, who buys coffee from Japan? Well, all United States... Now, the Jamaica government leased the Blue Mountain to the Japanese. Oh. And the Japanese oh. cultivate oh, so all the coffee. Oh. Uh, and okay. take away the coffee beans like this back to Japan. Oh, I see. And... Bottle uh, my, um, package it. Ferment it and um, refine it. And bring it back to Jamaica and sell us to Jamaica too. Mm. <laughs> so that's the way the coffee that's goes. That's a good business, man. That's a yeah. good business, man. That's <laughs> now these not call it cola nuts. That's the one that makes the Pepsi cola. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Coca -Cola. Mm. Medical value, dysentery, diarrhea, vomiting, poison, tummy, car, anything that goes wrong with the tummy, the cola nut. And if you don't have the cola nut, you take the Pepsi cola. Yeah. So that prevent upset stomach. Vomiting or anything it goes wrong with the tummy and rushing into the bathroom too often the Pepsi Cola prevent the bathroom going. So that's the cola nut. How would you do it on your own if you were just to buy the cola nuts? Do you cola do nuts, no, you can you grit. You can't do it. You yes. have to, it has to be You don't got to make Pepsi Cola. It has to be processed. Oh, right, nice. Beautiful legs. What a nice Wow. <laughs> 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 Especially to meet the bush doctor, mama, you have visitors, so I'm sharing some of my lectures with your people. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's why your people come on here. So if you want to buy anything off me, I have all these on the market. But the local people, everybody, everybody, every everybody, comes, everybody, comes everybody. Comes by here. Comes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now there is rum in that too. I smell rum no, no. on his finger. No, no. 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 All spice preventers right in there too. Uh, yeah. yeah. With, with rum? No, man, not rum. Man. Ginger. 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 Well, Betty, I thought this was one of the highlights of visiting Montego Bay in Jamaica. Well, it was unusual because we were, Wonderful. were very rare to go to yeah. something like it, that. It was, it was nice. And there's his pharmacy right out in the backyard. And we can see more of that, uh, a little bit more of that maybe next time. But this was very, very uh, enlightening to me. And to see how he put these various things together, uh, the, the ginger and, and all of that. Anyway, we'll talk about that another time. But if you're interested in any of the trips we have, and we do have one going back to the Panama yes, Canal. April the 3rd. Right. Give Betty a call at 488-7443. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.